Namaste, beloveds. This is Motherhood Wisdom, and I'm doing this video because I'm just so moved to do so. Um, there's been a lot of downloads. There's been so much happening, you know, kind of worldwide, and I, as a very sensitive empath, I have been going through um, a lot of processing of downloads, a lot of um, needing to be kind of quiet, needing to, um, excuse me, there's a, a hair, <laughs> um, needing to be to myself, needing to be quiet, needing to um, kind of hibernate a little bit, I guess, or be off of um, Facebook and, and just the computer e itself, even. Um, and in, in doing that, there has been a lot of a lot of clarity, a lot of new information. Um, a lot of understanding, a lot of just harvesting, you know, and I apologize for this, the lighting, it's the sun, it's, you know, going in and out and curtains blowing and all that kind of stuff. Um, it is what it is and I'll leave it alone. <laughs> um. One of the things I'm, I want to talk about is um, the dreaming, some of the dreams, the dreaming, um, things that I've been receiving and things that I'm processing, um, trying to understand them in a deeper manner because they're coming, um, they're coming from a deeper place within me. Um, and it has a sense of urgency with it that I've never kind of felt before. And the urgency is for me to integrate and grasp, you know, this. And I guess it's so big that they're giving it to me in, in, in parts, in bundles, so to speak. Um, and I mentioned it before in, um, I think the last video that I did, and it's about food, beloved. It's about human beings. It's about understanding and knowing yourself. That's the bottom line of it. Um, what I'm going to say can possibly gross you out. It freaked me out. It grossed me out. It's still kind of grossing me out, but... I'm learning that there are certain things in this life that we are going to have to face and that we are going to have to understand about ourselves um, in order to access and open up different other parts of ourselves. One of the things that um, I guess I'm speaking of, and, and this is the gross part, so if you are sensitive or easily offended by um, you, you have a weak stomach or something like that, um, you might want to stop it and give it about maybe 10 to 15 minutes on down um, and then pick up from there. Okay. Okay. Um, beloveds, what was told to me is we eat dead flesh. We eat dead things. We are no different than the vultures. We, th this kind of blew my mind. And like I said, I come from indigenous ones. And I said that on the other one. This is the second roll of this. <laughs> um, that was weird. Okay. Grounding. As I said in the in the other video, um, I come from indigenous ones. 
I come from hunters and gatherers. I come from, um, you know, those who, who hunt and brought in wild game, wild meat that, that, you know, didn't just go to a grocery store or just raise chickens in the yard or something of that nature. We ate venison. We ate, you know, coon, raccoon. We ate, we ate those different meats. I ate them. My mother loved them. You know, game hens, Cornish hens, all, all of these, um, duck. I'm not a big fan of duck, but these were the type of meats, and they're different from domesticated meats that you buy in, you know, the grocery store. They're, they're different from, um, there's no gamey taste, there's no wild flavor to it. And what I'm saying, beloveds, is... I used to watch um, Beverly Hillbillies, and Granny and all of them were always cooking the roadkill, and, you know, we would go, oh, roadkill, oh my god, that's so disgusting, and what spirit has, has, has me contemplating and understanding is that roadkill is still meat. And the only thing that makes it different than anything else, the, the flesh itself, the meat, the carcass that's left there, you know, that's dead, is we go buy it in the store and it's been processed for us already. And, it, and we're told what it is. And so, beloved, this is what, you know, some of the things that... I have been processing that we look at the consumption of dead things we eat, but we don't really think about it. You know, I think the the vegans and the vet, the vegetarians, they have thought about what flesh is and so they said we're not going to eat flesh because it's killing the animal and spilling blood and, and you're eating flesh you're eating it you know and what they don't understand is they're eating the flesh of the plant when they eat the seeds they're eating the babies they're, they're, they're eating the seeds you know you have to really understand you have to know what you're doing and know what you're interacting with and know what you need as a being. And one of the other things was that um, not only in eating the, the seeds, but when there's juice or there's sap, that's liquid. That's the blood of it. That's what you're you're drinking and licking and eating and the sticky and all of that. Those are the same composition as blood. It's just in plant form. Um, the minerals, the vitamins, those that's rock in rocks, you know, in the dirt and soil. We eat these things, we consume them. Our body needs them. Why? Because we contain inside of us both life and death, just like the earth does, and just like the animals do. Those same deer that eat that grass, you know, that we eat, we die and we're buried and we become the grass, what grows, you know, that essence that grows the grass. And it's, it's a continuing cycle. And the cycle is for the earth. We, the healthier we are, we are the caretakers. The more the earth is alive and, and can thrive. And if we want abundance, this is the kind of wisdom that we have to start applying. We have to rebuild and restructure 
our whole way of thinking about the way that we consume food, that our body is this unit, this this mechanism, this organism that is tied to everything, especially first to the earth and the universe. It is, when you think of clockwork and you think of all the little gizmos and sprockets and, and whatever else that the springs and everything that makes it tick we have to get that about ourselves that's part of knowing ourselves um one of the things that kind of is is coming up inside of me is that this is um, one of the spiritualities is like the foundation and the step of a Buddhist principle about eating and what food really is and not to get attached to it. And when you understand that portion of it, beloved, you start adding that sense to other things, branching it out, you know, and Beloved, you apply the wisdom. And the wisdom is that we are connected to everything, you know. And everything that we do is tied into the earth. She is our mother. She is everything. And we have to learn how to live here. We have to learn how to prosper here. We have to learn that by doing so, we are benefiting her, not only ourselves. It's it's really a joint partnership with everything that is alive, you know? And so, like I said, this is the this is where I've been. Um I've been having to be still. I've have distanced myself. Um be quiet, so get stay off the computer, you know, stay off the of phones, uh, stay to myself, um, watching certain kind of movies to understand the different frequencies that are rampant right now. Um, and and it's a it's a beautiful thing, beloved, but there's so much that is going on. And I'm going to read some cards, too. Um, so I want to move forward um, with this. I just wanted to share that because I've been dreaming this. It's It's been just coming up in me. Um, I'm finding that it's also with this knowledge and this understanding of it. When I'm eating now, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> connecting more with what I'm eating. Um, I'm a foodie. I'm into textures. I'm into smells. I'm, I'm into colors. I'm, I'm into, you know, all of the presentation. I'm, I'm into what it is, and what it consists of, what the substance is, and, you know, how it grows and what its body is. I've always, that's just me. But like I said, I'm really starting to get a different understanding right now of our consumption of energy. Um, that's what Mama is teaching me and showing me. Um, and understanding what we're becoming. Because the we are ascending out of the basic animalistic simplicity of infancy in our human spiritual state, spiritual human state, however you want to grasp that. And we are infants. I don't care how many of billions of years we've been here. Okay, we are still killing each other. We are still fighting over land. We are still 
using chants and, and different ideology like blood and soil. We like to cater and pander to there being less and that those ha that have less are less and that those who have more are more, are better, are superior simply because they have more. More what? We have so far to go, beloveds, and we think we're so advanced. We think that we're so technologically advanced, that we are so superior, that we are just the shit. And here we are, we're killing the earth. We're killing our mother. We're killing each other. Because we, we do not process the connection the divine connection, the unity, the circle, the knowledge of self, that is what is missing in each of us. No matter how enlightened we think we are, that is what is missing. We are very ignorant of ourselves in the most basic of ways. And this is what is being shown to me. And like I said, beloveds, it's, it's it's really powerful when you when you think about something that's simple. And with me, it's like, why didn't I ever see that before? I, you know, what how did I miss that? That we that I eat dead flesh. You know, I eat death. I eat it. You know, how how did I did I miss that? You know, that was never taught to me. Valerie, sit here and eat your food. Yeah. Valerie, this is a chicken. Yeah. Valerie, blah, 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 blah. But not Valerie, you're eating dead stuff, okay? This is what we need to learn. This is what some of these babies that are coming here, and we call them indigo and crystals, and they don't want to eat that, and they don't want this, and they don't, listen to them. Listen to them. They are a come here programmed. They come here with a knowledge that we don't have. They come here with receptors open that allow them to see things in a, in a way, in a manner that is so simplistic, but so deep and complex at the same time. And these things have to be in our awareness now in order for us to become more mindful of things, more mindful of the way that we need to take care of the earth, more mindful of the way that we need to take care of ourselves, more mindful of the way that we need to take care of each other. You know, and why? So, beloveds, um, that's that's that portion that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm going to be, excuse me. I'm going to be um, reading some cards. I'm also going to, um, there's something I want to talk about. I'll, I'll start start with the storms um, that are coming. I have been speaking of earth changes. There are a lot of different earth changes that are getting ready to happen. Um, and we have to really start um, being aware of that and preparing ourselves. And that doesn't mean that we have to go crazy. It just means that something I don't know, hair or something. That um, we have to have it in our minds that the the earth is not the same as it once was, and that we are going somewhere. We have arrived at a point, and that this point is a point of change, a change of everything as we've known it. Um, change of history, change of a new knowledge of 
where spirituality is and what it really is, and how the lies have been told and used against humanity. Um, all the different things in order to gain control um, and to prepare itself for this eventuality. But this eventuality is here. Human beings are waking up. Human beings are now grasping um, and seeing things in ways they haven't before. And they're no longer so full and, and so ready, excuse me, so ready to be victimized. Um, we are survivors, we are fighters. That is who and how we see ourselves now. Hmm. Wait a minute, I, I need to do a little protection because I'm Okay, sorry about that, beloveds. Um, a lot of times lately, there's there's this little interference. Um, sometimes for me, um, I'm clairaudient. Sometimes, not all the time. I don't know how that works, but it works when it wants to, um, or just sometimes. But anyway, there has been some ringing. There has been some noise and distortions. Like I said, there's there's been a lot of things that are showing me that we are <laughs> we are moving, you know, at at such a rate and at such a speed that we are we're here <laughs> and we've got to catch up, you know, and it's freaking some of us out and it's really scaring others, and others are like yes. You know, and we, we've we just got to come together and, and ride and roll with this, with the increased awareness, with the understandings that are coming. And we've, we've just got to use our voices, use our common sense. We've got to not care about... being seen as politically correct, but balanced and full of love and compassion and be spiritual. It's not about being politically right. It's about being spiritually correct. And that's where we've got to get to. And that's one of the reasons for this particular video. It's where I am right now in my own head. And I want to begin to to once again address the storms. Beloveds, these are earth changes. Many of those ones, I, I, I hear people moaning and groaning and complaining about why others stayed in their homes and, and why this and calling them stupid and blah, blah, blah. Those people have been there. There have been many storms every year. This is the storm and hurricane season of time for them. What is different is that these are storm these are super storms. These are storms that the earth has never seen before. Some are saying these are unnatural storms or that these storms have been tinkered and tampered with to make them more into what they are. All of it is mama's will, period. We I want to say that change is the only constant, beloved. And what we're being shown is that family, community, humanity, that is what is valuable. It's not the homes, you know, it's, it's not even the memories in those homes because new memories can be made. We, those can be held on to, those mementos, you know, and I'm, I'm the first one, you know, 
to try to wrap my head around this because, like I said, my things were all the way in California and I brought them all the way back here and, you know, so I understand the things and the attachments to things and the loss of things. I understand loss, period. Beloveds, what we're being taught, what we're being shown, what is being opened into our consciousness and trying to be brought into our awareness is the need to work together. The need to work together as individuals to grasp our diversity, to understand that we are interdependent upon each other, no matter what color of our skin. You know, no matter what gender, male or female, we have a purpose. Our purpose, supposedly as the highest functioning thing on this planet, is to take care of the planet. The purpose of your life is to take care of the planet. You raise your children to take care of the planet. It is that awareness that is coming back. It is the planet that gives you life. And, beloveds, we really have to grasp this. It's not about, oh, we broke the earth, let's move to Mars. That's not how it works. We have got to grow we have really got to grow and we've got to grasp the need of why we need to grow. We we really, you know, need to understand that. And that's that's all part of knowing yourself. And beloveds, um, one thing that I touched on in the other video was um the body and being in the body and knowing the different parts and the different organs and so forth. One of the diff the organs, body organs that has been coming up in my meditations and in my dreams and in my um, guided visualizations and everything that I'm, I'm doing to get healthier and, and to do what I need to do to ground and, and myself, keep myself balanced, is the liver. Um, and beloveds, I'm going to be doing more research on it, but I need you to do more research on it too. It's coming up for a reason. Spirit is giving, bringing this to our awareness for a reason. Um, we need to understand what the metaphysical and spiritual value of the liver is, what it means, what it means when it's integrated into the body, what it does is it's far as its functions and what kind of diseases happen to the liver that can lead to death and cause all kinds of symptoms and different things in your body. I'm being told that this is the time of the liver, the age, the year of the liver or whatever. And so we've listened to that crow. This is the... Um, Mm -hmm. This is the time of the liver, beloveds, and I'll do a little research and I'll leave some links um, down here in the box and I'll also be doing some things on Facebook under my Valerie Ames page. I'm also getting ready to um, do some, um, you can reach me on Facebook, I'll be do starting to do Facebook tarot readings and intuitive readings um and if you don't have facebook you can um i'm going to set up a, a mailbox or inbox where you can it'll just be this so I'm, I'm i'm setting up different things beloved i'm also um me and my brother are looking to get some land and do some things on it as far as becoming um, self-sufficient and preparing and, and um, for survival as far as 
establishing family and community and just spiritual, you know, sanctuary and kind of. So this is all the stuff that's going on with me. Okay, I've talked about the liver, I've talked about the food, I've talked about the changes, uh, the politics, politics and religion, church and state. Um, beloveds, we are in the thick of it. We are in the thick of it. Um, I just said that we are here to take care of the earth. We have to learn how to take care of ourselves. We have to learn how to take care of each other. And we have to learn how to take care of the earth. This is all one lesson. It's It may seem like there are many, many, many different. It's one. When you learn one, you, you learn how to do it all. When you know that you are part of that whole ecosystem, that whole macro and micro, both as above, so below, you are all, you are the totality of the conception of expression, divine expression, when it comes to life. We include the sun, we include the stars, we include the, the planets, those that we don't even know existed. That energy is within us. There's so much that we are getting ready to learn about us in this age. But we, before we can get there, we have to get past ourselves, past our human walls which are our fears. And we have to realize that those fears have been put in place by other human beings' thoughts of their what they feel is right and wrong and why. And we have to, just like we had to understand or I have to understand that I'm eating dead flesh, that we we really have to understand that everything is all tied together and we have been looking at it one way because that's how it was taught to us you know and now we have to broaden our understanding and our, an awareness of of it of eating of, of everything everything is from this point on, will never be the same when I think about that because a new thought has been introduced and that new thought will not allow the acceptance of that, that thought, will not allow me to just be the way I was before without this awareness, without this light, without this truth, without this knowledge. And so now I have to not only know it, but I have to start applying it and acting upon it in a manner that is best for me as a human being, individually and as part of the collective, as a light worker and a caretaker of the earth. So, beloveds, everything that you see going on from the storms, to the political, to the religious, it's all has us going in a direction. And we can get there kicking and screaming, or we can get there by going with the flow. You know, and, and I'm trying to go with the flow. I'm tired of fighting. I I am weary. I'm weary. I'm weary of that. I'm weary of that way. That way has made me weary. I'm, I'm ready to move on from that now. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, okay, let's get for more. Um, I want to speak on 
I'm going to do a, a broadcast on Blog Talk Radio show. Um, I'm going to do a show that will go into a lot much deeper um, into the different topics than what I'm doing right now. And that's because I'm going to do the cards here and show you the cards. And that's what um, I want this to be. And I'm being told to just move to the card. So, beloved, I'm going to start with, I'm going to do several different decks. Um, this deck is Life Purpose, um, Doreen Virtue. So I'm going to pull a Life Purpose card from, from this deck. And... It's very short. It's not something, um, a lot of these cards are short. The longest one will be the Isis Oracle, and I'll save that one for for the end. Um, beloveds, let us ask Spirit to guide and direct us to the particular cards that we need to see that will give us the best possible information that will help us to raise our vibration and our frequency and to start seeing things with clarity, to recognize and to fall in love with the truth, to become strong in our own sovereignty and divinity. Let us connect more with the work okay, that we need to be doing in a card. Just This is the animal's card. Um, and if you know anything about me, that is a... Leopard, jaguar, cheetah, blah, 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 feline. I am a jaguar woman, so this is a very powerful card. Um, animals. You understand animals and communicate with them intuitively. Trust your inner guidance as the animals are part of your life's work. Let me see what else this says. And this is the first card in the deck, beloveds. Wow. And it's on page 15. Which is a six. Animals. You understand animals and communicate with them intuitively. Trust your inner guidance as the animals are part of your life's work. You drew this card because your life purpose involves working with animals. You love them and they love you. You understand and appreciate their kind and gentle hearts and you frequently stand up for their rights. In fact, you can feel and hear and communicate with living creatures. This card is a validation for you to trust these intuitive insights and your inner guidance about ways to connect with the animal kingdom. Any career that you get involved with, get involved in, will benefit from your adding animals into the mix. For instance, having a pet on site at your store or office will open everyone's hearts and bring joy to all. You may find yourself doing voluntary or charity work on behalf of animals, including rescuing them at shelters or bringing awareness to their rights. With your keen animal communication abilities, you may also enjoy one-on-one -on -one work as a caregiver. This list of, of careers in this field is vast, so be sure to spend time outdoors in nature and give considerable thought to your options. Wow, beloveds. This card is so on point. So on point. It's, it's right with what... Um, I've been telling you. I want you to really see that card. I want you to see the water and the connection. I want you to see the wings on the little girl 
and she's such an innocent there with her little pink and her paleness and so forth and so on. If you know anything about the symbiology, you understand what is being shown you as a pure heart and a pure spirit. Um, and it's almost as though this animal and this child are indeed one being. So, beloveds, there, there's so much. There's so much there. You know, you've got them and you they look like they're on this mound. And there's a tree behind them. And there's bush and their eyes are closed. They're meditating. They're in sync. Their frequencies. This is everything that, like I said, is coming through. This is the awareness of ourselves as animalistic beings and where we are. We are the caretakers of the animals and the plants and mineral people. You know, that is our goal and our mission and our purpose for being. And we are failing them or we are growing and we are learning that by failing them we're failing ourselves and so we we're arriving that's how I'm starting to look at things instead of saying we're failing we're arriving right at where we need to be in our understanding this is part of the reprogramming and repatterning as well beloved so enjoy um i want to move on to another card and beloveds in finishing that prayer like i said this is how things have been going for me for a while and i'm trying to it's like J -j -j -j. this mind will be over here and i'll have finished one thing and then this will be going and then i'll be like wait did i finish that and, J -j 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 -j. and so please bear with me i'm learning I'm, I'm learning, I'm processing, I'm, I'm almost becoming compartmentalized and, and organized. So please be patient with me and bear with me. Um, the next deck is the Angel Raphael, and it is a healing deck. Um, and again, it's by Doreen Virtue. Okay. Um, again, this is... Archangel Raphael and Raphael, Archangel Raphael, beloved Archangel Raphael, angel of healing, help us to heal our frequencies, help us to heal our vibrations, help us to be able to integrate and harmonize and find balance with all that is, was, and will be. Give us direction in what we need to work on. Give us something good. Okay. Something good. Leave a stressful situation behind. <laughs> On a unicorn. Yay. If you know me, I love unicorns. Okay. There we go. Um, leave a stressful situation behind. It's here. Sixty-eight. And this is what it says. You drew this card because a stressful situation is affecting your health or the health of the person you're inquiring about. The ill effects that you're experiencing are the body's ways of communicating that the current level of stress is beyond its coping capability, capacity and it needs help now. Let me start this over, beloved, because as I'm reading this, I'm hearing this is what the earth is saying. So, um... Whoa, okay, and this is this is Raphael. You drew this card because a stressful situation is affecting your health or the health of the person you're inquiring about. The ill effects that you're experiencing are the body's way of communicating 
that the current level of stress is beyond its coping capacity and it needs help now. If there's a way to permanently or at least temporarily leave the situation, this would create a corresponding relief of the adverse symptoms. And beloved, this feels like it's in code to me. Um, there's some really, there's a lot of layers um, to this card. And the layering is like a skin. That's what it feels like. Um, and the skin has the hives, okay? Um, so the earth is the body, the earth is the skin. We are the skin and we're affected and afflicted and the whole body is suffering. Okay. Perhaps financial obligations are the reasons for remaining where you are. In such cases, stress management is vital to health and wellness. This includes assertiveness. Read books or take classes on the topic if necessary. Stress relieving outlets such as exercise and relaxing techniques like meditation, yoga, or massage. Think of these measures as mandatory investments in your long-term health. And beloveds, as I'm, I'm looking at this and, and putting it in context with what's going on in the world right now, I'm, we're being told to speak our truth and speak it assertively, to speak up for those who can't be heard, whose voices have been silenced or are so weakened from screaming and crying and looking for justice and asking and praying. And we're being told to be more assertive for these individuals. And that in doing this, it's vital for all of us. It's not just, you know, if you don't take care of your liver, your liver can kill you. So we're, we're, we're being told to go at this, not aggressively, but assertively. When aggressive is going at something with violence, to do something to it. Assertive is staying, standing your ground and defending. Okay, there's, there's a different flow of energy between aggression and assertiveness. And we are told to be assertive, not aggressive, assertive. Assertive means when something rears its head, you have to speak about it. You have to, you have to let it know. You have to look for the truth of it. You have to stay focused on the truth of it. You have to spread the truth of it. You can't let complacency about it set in. You can't feel wishy-washy about it. You can't just keep letting it. You've got to assert your sovereignty. You've got to assert your right to receive your inheritance. You've got to assert yourself. You've got to communicate that you are now at a different frequency. You are now vibrating at a higher vibration. And you are now taking a more active role or place or stance in your purpose as a caregiver. And I'm hoping that came out right. But that's what this card is about, beloveds. Um, and the more you relax and get away from stress, stress will push you towards aggression. Okay? Stress causes aggression. Rest and relaxation will help you 
be assertive because you will know the difference between those vibrations. You will know the difference between those frequencies. You'll know which one feels healthy and which one feels unhealthy. And in that state and that center being grounded, you will go towards the truth and you will assert that no, this is the truth. This truth brings peace. This world needs the peace. This is how this needs to happen. This is what needs to take place. And that's being assertive and sticking to it. Okay. Possible specific meanings. Know that when you take good care of your health, everyone benefits. Release guilt to God and the angels. Make a list of pros and cons about the stressful situation. Speak honestly with yourself and others about your true feelings and observations. Get support from people you trust in order to make healthy changes. My prayer. Dear Archangel Raphael, thank you for giving me the courage and willingness to take good care of myself, including surrounding myself with healthy relationships and positive situations. Very powerful card. Love it. Very powerful card. Um, and I'll show you once again. Raphael wearing green on the unicorn. Green. <laughs> Green, 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 beloved. Look for the frequency of green. Understand when you can put yourself in that frequency that that is the healthiest frequency for you. The green is the heart chakra. That's the seat of your humanity, of your soul. And that is where the integration of your soul and your spirit is. And where it circulates and accumulates in the liver and all of that, what it has. Connect these dots, beloved. They're, they're being given to you. Connect them um, in the way that they're meant for you. Do your research on different things that I'm saying. If you don't understand um, what I'm saying, when I say the frequency of the color green or that the color green is for the heart chakra, Understand these principles. All of this is ways for you to know yourself, ways for you to tap in to the spiritual signals, messages, frequencies that are available to you. By not knowing yourself and by not connecting to these waves of thoughts, feelings, knowledge, you're vulnerable. You're out there, you're unprotected, and fear is your greatest enemy. Self-doubt is your greatest enemy. Know yourselves, beloved. Assert <laughs> your love for yourself and your right to love yourself and know yourself and for the rights of others to know themselves and love themselves just the way they are. That this is all about we need the diversity to heal. We need the diversity to live. We need the diversity to grow. Okay. That is the Archangel Raphael portion. Um, the next one is the, uh, what I call the romance. The romance angels. So we're getting a little bit of everything um, here today. Um, okay, my deck is turned in on itself some kind of way. Huh. Okay, that was weird. All right, beloveds. Um, see that sun came up. Let me close this a little bit. So I don't look too much like Casper. Okay. Um.
let's say a the prayer to for the romance cards. Um, spirit, could you please give my beloved and myself some insight into relationships, into what we need to do, what we need to see, what we need to think about, what we need to, okay, <laughs> hold on a minute, that card just jumped, and go, and retreat, <laughs> retreat, retreat, Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. Wow. Let me see what this is the first time I've ever had this card to come up. Retreat. Ever, ever. Um, page 75, which is a 12, which is a 3. The romance angels see that your love life blossoms as you spend time alone with your partner or by yourself. It appears that you've become confused or conflicted by other people's advice. It's time for you to disconnect so that you can better hear your own feelings and opinions. If you are in a partnership, spending time together apart from others will renew your commitment and take it to the next level level. And I'm going to repeat that because I feel that um, a lot of you are feeling, are needing this advice um, simply because of some phone calls that I've got, some different trolling <laughs> that I've done on, the, on Facebook as far as relationships and so forth. And just keeping my ear out and temperature, just, just feeling the pulse of, of that. Um, With everything that's going on macrocosmically, what this is saying is that we need to give ourselves a little bit of to alone time. Um, and I spoke about it earlier. That's what I've been been doing um, is giving myself that alone time to think and to hear. And a lot of times, beloveds, um, a lot of people like to share things with me. I'm weird in that sometimes I don't want to get the, the information or confirmation or validation from that. I'd rather get it from spirit so that I know, you know, it's, it's authentic and it's coming from me and it's not coming from something that was given to me. So I'm, I'm a little bit picky and, and, those that know me know that I'm like that. It's not that, um, just like reading, I've kind of taken a break from reading because I want to be able to turn my own frequency up and, and able to get information, to glean information, to filter it and, and so forth and so on. It's a, it's a, it's a process. And what this card is saying that in order to really get to know yourself, you you need that time alone. And if you have a spouse or a partner who is needy when it comes to attention, assure them that it is not about them and not to take this personal. But this is something that you need to do for you. And that you need to be assertive about it, beloveds. You need to you need to let them know I need this. I need it for my health. I need it. I need it. And you know, define it, set your boundaries how you want to be assertive about that and disciplined about it and and focused on what you want, how you want it, what you need, how you need it. 
You design it. You create it. You manifest it. And you allow it. Okay? Okay. If you are in a partnership spending time together, apart from others will renew your commitment and take it to the next level. So there's a bonus in it for you. That, you know, been apart and coming back together, that that is a way to ignite fire. You know, learn how to to bring that spark and to create that spark and to nourish that spark. And sometimes, you know, being away from you helps you focus in on some things with you that when you come back to that relationship, you are better and you are stronger because you've processed some things either about you or about your partner that now allows you to allow communication to happen on a deeper level. So it's a very powerful card. This could mean taking a vacation, going on a nature hike, enjoying a long drive, or turning off the phones and computer as you both enjoy a quiet afternoon at home. The painting on this card also indicates a honeymoon, which could be the literal message. So there may be a deepening of commitment or a new serious relationship if you're currently single. <laughs> This card may indicate an upcoming engagement, wedding, renew or renewal of vows. This act, these activities, I'm so excited. <laughs> these activities are more meaningful as you spend time alone with your partner. If you're presently single, this card guides you to spend time by yourself, meditating upon your true feelings and thoughts. Be sure to take action based on any intuitive guidance. This strengthens your energy, which helps you rapidly attract and manifest your loving partner. So that is that card, beloveds. And that was a, that was a very informative card. And I'll show you again. Um, it's funny. This is a vacationing spot. And it looks ancient to me. And there's a castle, and it's it's not lush and water and beach and, you know, what you would expect. It's almost cavernous, almost, you know, ancient, going back into that romantic period of romance being more in your thoughts than it being physical, so to speak. Okay, let's get a message from our um, animal friends, and this is the the um, deck. Here we go, and um. Beloved, I'm just going to spread these. I'm being told to just do them like this. <laughs> okay. Um, Spirit, can you have one of your beloved creatures come forth and give us a wisdom that we need for this particular reading on this day that's needed to bring awareness of the frequency that we need in our lives right now. Peacock. <laughs> Let yourself stand out and be noticed. Peacock. Peacock is a very spiritual bird. Um, in the ancient lore, it is about the eyes. It is also about Io. Um, peacock was also in Greek mythology one of the power animals 
So, um, let's see what Peacock has to tell us. And excuse my phone. I I apologize for that. Okay, Peacock. Let's see here. Eighty six. Page eighty six. Eighty-six. There we go. And it's Peacock. So, let's see. Let yourself stand out and be noticed. I, I really wanted to stop ringing so you can hear me. And it's nothing I can do because the phone isn't here by me. So, um, it's actually in the living room. But, I got the... Whatever in here. And I'm waiting for it. You know, it takes so long. It's not answering. Hang up. Not that hard. Wow. Okay. Let me breathe for a minute. Okay. We are at one hour already. Okay. I am getting ready to read Peacock, beloved. There we go. It stopped. Thank you, Mama. Let yourself stand out and be noticed. It's time to step forward and stop hiding behind any of the facades that you've developed over the years. Although these personas have, Although these personas have been highly adaptive and have helped you along the way, for which you can be grateful, there's more of you to express to the world, and it's ready to emerge. Wow. Beloved, that, that just, it sends me, it sends me. I, a peacock has always had a certain energy for me. Um. The peacock is a male, those the ones with all the feathers and the colors. That's a male. That's a male energy that's so beautiful and iridescent and, and just sparkling. And that's that cock, you know. And it has its own energy. It has its own essence. And what I'm getting is that not only is this about the sacred male energy, but this is about the union of the female, the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine coming together as one. And in the frequency of this show, the identification of itself. Wow. It's time to step forward and stop hiding behind any of the facades that you've developed over the years. Although these personas have been highly adaptive and have helped you along the way, for which you can be grateful, there's more of you to express to the world and it's ready to emerge. Excuse me, it's suddenly cloudy again. Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Okay, that, that little interference. <laughs> Sorry about that, beloved. There's, there's a lot of things coming because they see the light. It's, it's like... Birds flying into glass, kind of, kind of deal, um, and and that's been happening a lot more lately. Um, having to <laughs> do the personal cleansing, cleaning, protecting. You know, when you're like I said, you you just have to know yourself, beloved. If this is part of your energy and part of what's going on with you. When you are getting to a certain 
place in your understanding. Like I said, there is a sensitivity that that comes upon you and you're realizing that um, there is a physical cleansing, spiritual physical cleansing that you do. If you don't want to touch, you can wave. You can, with a feather or, or anything, I don't have my feather right now. My feather is in storage, the one that I usually do my physical cleaning with, my physical cleansing space with is is in storage. But there there's a lot of energies that are, like I said, zapping. It's, it's like the, the fly zapper or the bug zapper, kind of, when the little dark energies goes zzz, 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 you can feel it you know you can you can feel it I'm empathic I, I feel <laughs> I feel it so let me get back to this the thousand eyes here we go um let yourself stand out and be noticed there's a certain safety and comfort in being inconspicuous and always staying in the background. Yet in playing it safe in this way, others don't have the opportunity to get to know who you really are. And you don't get to experience the richness and textures, <laughs> the, richest, the richness and textures that are possibly possible by participating more fully in life. By remaining in the background, you not only alienate yourself with, uh, from others, but often end up allowing others to choose for you. Doing so can make you feel like a passive victim of life. Being noticed does have some risks. People may criticize or judge you, particularly if they're not used to you asserting yourself in such a way. Lovers, I couldn't write this. I couldn't connect it like this if I wanted to. Being noticed does have some risks. People may criticize or judge you, particularly if they're not used to you asserting yourself in such a way. Or you may judge yourself, which can be even harsher sentence. These are the most likely risks, but they're actually very minimal. So shed any guilt or shame about coming out with who you are. Wear more colorful clothing, sing, dance, and let others know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. You can do so with grace, dignity, and even enthusiasm, and you might even enjoy it. Beloved, it's powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Okay, that's that peacock saying, get out there, show them what you got, and shake your shimmy, and don't be embarrassed if you jiggle or wiggle. Just get out there and do your thing. It's your thing. <laughs> Can't nobody tell you who to sock it to. So, sock it to them. Whoever you want to, sock it to them. It's time. Okay, we're getting to the last um, portion of my video, and that is the, um, <laughs> excuse me, that is the Isis Oracle, um, and this card will be a lot more in-depth, um, reading, okay. And I'm always using this deck, so I, I have to clean it. The other ones, I don't use so much. And usually when I put them away, I clean them before I put them away. So I didn't so much as clean them as I'm doing with this one. Simply because, like I said, this one <laughs> gets used almost on a daily basis for inside wisdom guidance okay 
love spirit. Okay. Love spirit. Okay. Two cards. Top and bottom. Okay. Cut. Top card. And bottom card. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Chariot of Ascension. Chariot of Ascension. Merkaba. Talisman of Potency. It's talking about the vulture. Charge charging sacred. Objects of power. This is about protection. So this was the first card. Um, the chariot. Okay. Chariot of Ascension. Here we go. Okay, I'm feeling somebody that's close to me. So let me speed things up a little bit. Um... Chariot of Ascension, page 33, which is a six. Here we go. Merkaba, spiritual work of the higher initiate. Your soul wishes to travel more freely between the dimensions of higher reality. This is to allow for conscious spirit communication, the free flow of soul light into the physical body and the joining in divine harmony of heaven and earth. It requires a powerful consciousness to do this. The Merkaba, Chariot of Ascension. And beloveds, that's M-E-R, look that up. K-A, look that up. B-A, look that up. Those are Egyptian terms. Um, they're three very powerful um concepts. So look them up. Do diligence. Do your homework. <laughs> Chariots of Ascension. Merkaba. Okay. The Merkaba Chariot of Ascension and Soul Fire is the spiritual gift to attain these divine purposes now, available to you as a high initiate. There are times when the soul becomes ambitious and wishes to live its entire light in conscious oneness with all expressions of its being, including the physical body. It may wish to do so simply because it is the nature of all beings to eventually realize themselves as divine, or because it needs specific new skills to be available to the human expression in the physical body so it can continue with its divine purpose. Caretaker, Earth Caretaker. Those skills might be channeling divine energy or conscious heat or consciousness for healing, traveling easily between the worlds for conscious spirit communication, gaining greater artistic or creative ability because it feels wonderful to create or any number of other purposes. This oracle brings you guidance with a special spiritual practice has become, has come, or is soon coming to your attention that will help your soul reach you more fully. It will be an advanced practice and it will serve you well at this time in your journey to reach the higher levels, capacity, and spiritual responsibilities that are available to you as a high initiate. Peace to you, beloved. Your spiritual work on this planet is greatly supported. The Chariot of Ascension Oracle also offers you a particular sacred teaching 
from the priestess of high initiates, Lady Isis. This is the practice of the Merkaba, soul vehicle or chariot of ascension. This is what you ride on to take you higher. This vehicle is an energetic structure of sacred geometry that strengthens and protects you, allowing for your consciousness to travel instantaneously and freely between dimensions and realities without compromising your vibration or damaging your energy bodies. Merkaba is a vehicle of great strength and power and is best used with a heart dedicated in unconditional love and service. It can be used to travel on the entire planes to stars and temples for higher guidance in an instant, as well as to connect with other souls on the inner planes at various levels of evolution. And beloveds, this is, I want you to hear what I just said. So when you encounter feelings or thoughts or energy, understand what you're what you're doing. You're encountering someone's Merkaba. Okay, you're you're there's a reason for this. Okay? And instinctively you know. Just like some people can feel, like I said, I'm an empath. When there are certain types of spirit around, I'll get cold. When there are other different types, I'll get hot. Okay? So there's there's all different kind of feelings. When someone is draining, I feel pulling from my navel. There there is all kinds of ways. Like I said, when you become knowledgeable about yourself and your frequency. And how you feel and how you um, deal with energy, so to speak. Okay, let's move forward. Um, 122.07. Merkaba is a vehicle of great strength and power and is best used with a heart dedicated and unconditional love and service. It can be used to travel on the inner planes to stars and temples for higher guidance in an instant as well as to connect with other souls on the inner planes at various levels of evolution. It is recommended that such a practice only be used with permission granted from the soul in question and from a place of love and intention to be of healing service. Merkaba allows you to travel without the usual restraints upon your energy field, but like any powerful practice, there is wise caution. You will travel and experience what is in your heart. So, beloveds, don't just go traipsing or, or, or trying to go and find and seek and look and dig. And you're in a space that is not a good place to receive. If you're angry or if you're anxious or if you're scared or if you're stressed out, that's not the time to get into the Merkaba and, and go. Because you're going to encounter things that are going to increase that frequency or going to, and you don't want to be overwhelmed, okay? And like I said, if you don't know what you're doing, this is not for you right now. This is, this is for those who are spiritually a little bit more advanced and leave it to them. And there's a reason you should leave it to them because I'm going to be real and, and assertive <laughs> right now. There are people who lose their minds trying to do this. There are people that die trying to do this, okay? And I'm not weaving fairy tales and stories here. I'm letting you know the truth. And nobody is trying to keep you from doing something. It's trying to keep you safe. And protect yourself always, beloveds. And your spiritual self is your greatest shell. That's the first thing somebody should encounter. Because that's what you should, that's your spiritual protection and everything should be up. That should go before you. When somebody makes a presence into a room, like when I walk into a room and people will be like, oh, oh. It, and it's, it's, it's not me. It's not what I have on. It's not what I'm dressed up as. 
because I've gone and experimented with this, okay? I've gone in rollers and, and, and okay? It's, it's this presence. It's the spiritual presence. It's the spiritual presence. Just like I've gone on different radio shows with other hosts and been in different situations, and they'll say, Valerie or Mother Whit, will you say a prayer? And I'll say, sure, because they're, I'm a vessel. They're asking for mama. They're asking for me to summon mama. They're asking me to speak for mama. They're, they're, it's not me. It's, it's the purpose, my purpose that's being recognized. And for me, that's beautiful. That means I'm doing what my mama wants me to do. If you recognize that in me, then that means I am reflecting it. I am vibrating it enough. I am I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And it feels good. And I want more of that. <laughs> so this is why I'm doing all of this, beloved. It's for us. Okay. Merkaba allows you to travel without the usual restraints upon your energy field, but like any powerful practice, there is a caution. You will travel and experience what is in your heart. Keep your heart open and clear and do not use Merkaba if you are feeling uncentered, ungrounded, disconnected, or angry. It is a technique to use when you are feeling peaceful and aligned with yourself. At such times, great growth in consciousness is possible for you using Merkaba. The Oracle of the Chariot of Ascension is a gift of high-level spiritual training. Your wisdom in using what you have learned helps you make the most of this sacred gift. This oracle is as much about receiving the training as it is about knowing when to apply it and have to have restraint and when to have restraint. The oracle of ascension is also confirmation you are growing spiritually and becoming ready for greater tasks and spiritual responsibilities. If you have been considering taking a step to engage in teaching or healing and studying or practicing at a higher level, whether spiritually or in your chosen field or profession, you are encouraged to follow your heart and your destiny and be bold. Say yes to yourself. The Chariot of Ascension speaks of rising destinies and success. And beloved, I this was just read in the last video that I did. Okay, this this card, and you see me with all the cards. These cards they keep repeating for reasons, beloved, and we have to have to take responsibility of receiving what's being given to us. So you can't say, oh, I've been praying, but God ain't answered my prayers. What are you open to receive? What does your answer have to look like? Where do you go get it? Can you rely upon it? There's, there's so much, beloved. I'm going to read the incantation i'm not going to read the ritual lady isis and serapis bay shining bright support my merkaba build my body of light i am in your protection now and from harm i am free allow me now with my inner divinity through my own free will as being as a being of light i now allow my merkaba to alight arising from below and descending from above. Penetrate darkness too with divine light and love. Merkaba, protection, body and spirit as one. Fragmentation and disconnection are now forever undone. And I speak that into the universe. I speak that into the earth. I speak that into our beings. I speak that into our DNA. I speak that into the minds of our ancestors and into those in the present and of those in the future. Let us learn 
that fragmentation and disconnection are now forever undone. We are not fragmented beings. We are holy, whole beings. We only have to understand that about ourselves. The fragmentation is in our memories. It's in our DNA. It's been programmed there to disconnect. And we have to reconnect. And we do that by accepting our diversity, our diversity of purpose, our diversity in the way we're looked and designed as far as male, physical, big, small, tall, short. It's designed that way. My mama is not limited. Okay. And, and that's, what we has to grasp. What does something look like without limitations placed upon it? What does unconditional love look like without restraints or restrictions or any kind of censorship? What does that look like when it's abundant for all and everybody gets their, their little bowl full? Something to think about. Okay, beloved, so let's get to this last card. Um, this is a very powerful card, beloved. Talismans of potency. Um, I've gotten this card a couple of times for my own little personal readings. Um, there are several things that I want you to see in this card. Um, the first one is, there are three beings in this card. Um, let me, let me see. Do I have a pen? Yeah. No, that's not the pen. Hold on. I know I had a pen. Okay, I'll, I'll use my makeup brush. Um, here we go. This is a face. This is a face, and this is a face. These two are God, goddesses, and this two is a goddess. But I want you to understand the three aspects of this one goddess. These two aspects, these two consciousness, reside here. This, I want you to understand the vulture wings on the side of her head, and the rejet, the snake. And the uresis. Okay. Um, I want you to understand all of those things. And beloveds, if you don't know what they stand for, do yourself a favor and look them up so you can begin to start becoming aware of what these ancient symbols are really about. Don't just look at it and think it's, oh, it's Egyptian. Blah, 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 blah. If that's the way you think, why do you limit yourself that way? Why do you think you're only capable of handling only one philosophy? And you're not broadening your horizon. You're not even adding to your own knowledge. Whether you believe something or not, have the knowledge before you say you don't agree with it. Know what the hell you don't agree with, okay? Not just something random in your head or in your mind or something that you've heard someone else talk about. Be able to stand your ground on what you know. And the wisdom is to put what you know into practice, okay? Okay, let's see what this card is talking about beloveds again this is a very powerful card um and again i'm seeing the merkaba in here um i'll point to that right here when it's talked about the fragmenting and so forth just so you can hear see what i'm saying um right here and that's purple 
right there. That's a part of that like above. That's part of that consciousness. It's not purple anywhere else. Just right there. Um, also, the Isis knot. The Isis knot here is a bluish, and I want to say bluish green. So I'll say that a bluish green instead of the red that it usually is. So let's get to this card, beloveds, and see what it has to say to us. Talismans of potency. It's going to tell us about protection and how to empower ourselves and certain items. And there's a history behind that and a reason for it. Okay, talismans of potency. 170, which is um, an 8, which is the goddess number, sacred number. Talisman of Potency, charging sacred objects of power. Sacred tools and objects can be, become an extension of your energy field. Focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and matter, and learning to bring physical matter more deeply into light and life. And beloveds, let me stop for a minute because this is <laughs> red phone ringing. Red phone ringing, baby. With, with this, everything that we are seeing with the storms, and so forth. We need to learn how to use our energies, our our ways. And the storm literally shows us that in a literal manner. And what I'm speaking of is a figurative or metaphorical kind of way with this, beloveds. And That is understanding how to use your power and your intention to change something, to manifest something. Right now, with what's going on in the United States, as far as racial um, issues and tensions and everything else, and, and just the awakening, even with in the um, LGBT community. There, there's so much assertion going on right now because people are tired of the bullshit. People are, are tired of the lies. People are tired of being lied to. People are tired of the smiles plastered on your face that don't reach your eyes, knowing that you're lying to them and knowing you can't do anything about it or you won't say anything about it or it'll just continue to happen because that's the way it's always been. Boys will be boys. Blah, 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 blah. No. And excuse my French, but I'm going to say, fuck that. Fuck it. Mm -mm. Not no more. It, it's time for something different. The old boy network. Done with it. The world is done with it. There are enough people standing up and asserting themselves, saying, no more. No more. We're not being silent anymore. we we not even going to let you perpetrate this on us and our offspring anymore. We are taking a stand and we are saying no. We are caretakers of the earth. We are not your personal slaves. We're not here to wait on you. Work for you. Sell off our kids to you. And that you is the elite. Get it straight. Don't get it twisted. It's time for individuals to take upon their own sovereignty back upon themselves. That is what this is all over the world right now. Um, I got into a conversation with my brother. And we were talking about um, 
how we were looking at the protests. Um, there are so many of them. Last night, the protest was about um, the dreamer children um, and young adults being used and politicized. as though they're nothing but a bargaining tool and not living, vibrant beings, not our brothers and sisters, not our children, not other human beings even. <laughs> we don't even do the animals what we want to do to other human beings. Beloveds, we, we got a lot of way to go. We got a long way to go. But we're getting there. And it's going to take more of us being assertive. More of us using our voices. Getting back to the, um, the protests in the conversation with, between me and my brother. Um, years ago, I always looked at um, things and I looked at what was happening um, Tiananmen Square with those youths there in China. And I was saying to myself, we, since the civil rights, we, America doesn't have those kind of problems anymore. We, we don't, I couldn't identify with that. Now, beloveds, I identify with it all. And I know that that's where we're headed. If we do not rationalize it, if we do not assert ourselves and bring truth and justice for all, Okay, in America and around the world. I'm starting with America because that's, that's where I'm, I'm more rooted right now. But, beloveds, this, this is going on all over the world. And it's coming to a point where, like I said, the lies are starting to unravel. Excuse me. <clears throat> the lies are starting to unravel, okay? And when I say the lies are starting to unravel, I mean the lies of the Founding Fathers. I mean the lies of those who have taught us what history is from the conquering conqueror's point of view, not from the Native American view, not from the African American view. A lot of the readers, or a lot of the, re I say readers, <laughs> a lot of the people watching this video may not know that Africans were here long before Plymouth Rock ever landed. And if you do your due diligence and your research, start with Khalifa, K-A-L-I-F-A or C-A-L-I-F-A. Khalifa, Queen Khalifa. Um, she was who California is named after. Do your research, beloveds. As a child, like I said, I grew up watching Tarzan and all of these things, Rifleman and blah, 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 blah. And I grew up with this limited understanding of what Africans were. I grew up with a limited understanding of what Native Americans were based upon my own experience and, and my experience being both and, and not being part of either world fully was it had its own scope, its own little niche for me. And beloveds, we have got to, we have got to know ourselves. If we know ourselves, nobody can come and tell us who we are. Nobody can, can say that we are inferior. That was the one thing people would ask me. As a child, one of the things that drove me um, 
to be smart, to want to be smart, to be intelligent. My father had a third grade education, but he was the most intelligent man alive. And to, like I said, to live in that small, tiny town that I grew up in and was born and raised in up to the age of 12, and dealing with the racial stuff that I dealt with and, and, and the way people wanted me to feel, they wanted me to feel ashamed. They wanted me to feel less than. They needed me to feel, they wanted, and I wouldn't. I refused. I refused to be less than. I refused, even as a child, you know, and I would get angry about it. And I would have all, my parents would give me the conversations that as a child of color, your parents had to give you about this world and your place in it and why people will treat you differently. This is a conversation that if you are not one of these individuals, then you don't know what I'm speaking of. But I can tell you this, you've been lied to just as much as I have. If you've been lied and told that you are more privileged, that you have more privilege, that you are more intelligent, that you are more human, that you are more spiritual, that you are more intellectual, that you are more beautiful, that you are just more. This is what you've been taught. And everything that exists supports what you have been taught. And then to see that that's a lie, that has got to be shocking for you. And it's going to take some processing. Just like I was saying the when I began this with the the thought of what I eat being dead flesh. You know, that that's a process. This is a process. I have to unlearn everything that I've been taught about food, about meat, how good it is and, and, and all of this and all of that. As a child, like I said, my mother, we ate wild game. You know, I I, I had to learn how to skin a rabbit and cut it and fillet it and, and bone it and debone it and, and, and all of this. You know, I had to learn that, <laughs> you know, if you're going to buy game from somebody that you don't know, to make sure the head or the feet is still on it so you'll know what kind of animal you're eating. If you've never learned this, you've never had to, to live like this. And and you've always gone to the grocery store. If somebody brings this to you, you're going to freak the hell out. You're going to think, oh, you're crazy. You know, but beloveds, once upon a time, there was no damn grocery store. Okay? You had to do these things. And... People had a whole different understanding of eating the animal and not wasting any of it because they knew it was life. And they knew that it benefited them. And it, it this was part of the circle of life. That animal, you are what you eat. Animal, plant, and mineral. Like I said, it's a repattering. It's a awakening of looking at things, very simplistic things, in a much more powerful way to cause deeper insights and deeper thoughts for yourself as an individual, as an expression of the divine. And... Well, loves, that's what, that's what we're here to do, and that's where we're going. Okay, let me continue. 
Sacred tools and objects can become an extension of your energy field, focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and manner. I'm being told to grab the curtain, okay? <laughs> um, there we go. Focusing your power and intention, helping you heal the split between spirit and manner and learning to bring physical matter more deeply into light and your life. You are encouraged to work with sacred materials in a conscious way to help your own healing and enjoyment of the material world as a part of your spiritual practice. Your love for the physical world of matter is a gift to the earth too. You are guided to cleanse and charge sacred objects to empower your energy field and accomplish your spiritual mission now. These objects might be a wand, a chalice, a sword, a bowl, or even a special tile with an image that you love, a statue, cloth with a beautiful design, a natural crystal or a black mirror, or a rock, shell, or feather you found waiting for you whilst out in nature one day. If finding a gift is intended for your healing work, I'm sorry, if finding a gift in nature, it is wise to ask the spirit of the earth if the item in question is intended for your healing work. And if you feel it is, then of course, receive it with gratitude. If not, bless it and move on. This oracle is seeking to draw your awareness to your special ability to work with material objects to awaken spiritual light within them. The material world is filled with light and our loving attention can help awaken that light within form. Be careful doing this, beloved. Make sure your intentions are very, very clear. Make sure the object that you're using has been cleansed, sanctified, anointed, and everything with your intentions and with love, unconditional love, before you even go there, okay? Because I know some of you will, you'll try to do you, you'll do these things. You're capable of manifesting something. Of What you're doing is transferring energy. And you can do that. And that's a good way to learn about frequency. Is to, <laughs> if you told this, um, learn to feel the energies, the energy between your palms, right here, and the bowl in the center there, right there, inside there, and see it as, as about this, this, this big, and know that's focusing it, and, and learn, learn to close your eyes, and learn to put your hands together, and learn to feel that energy, learn to feel the heat between your fingers, feel the pushing back, learn how to make energy balls, whatever you want to do, learn that sensitivity in your hands, that the power that you have to do that. Um, the other thing is that helps you with intention, that helps you with focus, that helps you with how big you want it to be, how small you want it to be. And if you're, just like when I'm reading these cards, that energy is going to these cards. When I pray and I, I ask, I am charging these cards. These cards are, are charged. These are my cards. They are full of my energy. So when I they when I ask spirit to speak to me through them to give me the one that I need to use or that needs to talk to me or that I need that lesson 
this is what comes and, and beloved this is the energy and you can take a small I have this one this is one of my stones I keep next to my bed it's just a stone but this stone is charged this stone is charged for with protection and other things and that's why I keep it next to my bed <clears throat> and I charged this is personal um, this stone and I have a relationship an energetic relationship and it doesn't have to stay in my mind all the time it's here in my bedroom and it does what it does it absorbs and it draws and it sends it you know it this is how you empower yourself it doesn't cost you nothing okay all you need to do is use you use you speak what you need understand that this is a part of you connect with it on a mental spiritual metaphysical level okay i'm not talking literally to a rock i'm talking to the energy that spirit has used to in this form okay beloveds learn how to how to be your sovereign self your highest sovereign self and it is a process that it is a process nobody has reached it so if somebody is to oh i'm there pay me 400 500 900 dollars and, and i'll teach you how to be there too bullshit 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 beloved stop being sheep there is no perfect person. There is no person that knows it all. There is no person to guide you other than you. You have instincts. You have impulses. You have reactions. You have things that trigger you. You have pains. You have aches. You have all kinds of symptoms. You have all kinds of feelings you have all kind of encounters you have all type of dreams you have all types of thoughts music and 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 art will take you and make you feel different things this is all a part of knowing yourself of knowing your sovereign being of connecting and reconnecting with the universe the all that is and knowing that it is a part of you and once you can grasp that, then you can get into superpowers, clear audience, telepathy, everything else. But you got to have a sense of knowing yourself. Just like I said when I was little, nobody could tell me I wasn't good enough. I wasn't this enough. I wasn't that enough. Why? Because no, I knew who I was. I knew. I was good enough. I knew I wasn't less than. I knew I wasn't stupid. I knew spirit spoke to me. You could not tell me what I didn't see, what I didn't hear, what I didn't know. You could. And that's where we have to go. There are certain things as a child that you knew. Nobody could tell you no different. And you would hold on to it even if you got toe up. That's the mindset. That's the sovereignty. That's what we have to be assertive about. As children, we were assertive. When we thought something was true and this was unfair, regardless, regardless, of the circumstances, I'm going to let you know how I feel. I'm going to let you know what I think. 
regardless. And we have to get back there. And we have to learn to speak up for the things that we see that are in just, that are not justified. That, that's not justice, that's not love, that's not full of compassion, that's hurtful, mean, and cruel, that's racial, that's disrespectful, that's trying to take the dignity of another human being who is just as sovereign as you are, who was created just as you are. Okay, let me move forward in this, beloveds. Um, here we go. Um, it's getting dark, so, okay, there we go, okay, um, here we go, the, this oracle is seeking to draw your awareness to your special ability to work with material objects to awaken spiritual light within them. The material world is filled with light and our loving attention can help awaken that light from within form, within form, within form that keeps resonating with me and it, it's sending off a green light like those Raphael cards like that, an emerald green light just keeps blinking every time the light within form, light within form, emerald, emerald and now I'm emerald tablets, okay, light within form. In the same way that someone seeing the best in you, knowing that you are truly capable of, can help reach your dreams and become that self more fully, <clears throat> so too can holding an awareness that just like our bodies, the material world holds its own light and benefits from love, attention, and care. Pay attention, beloveds, because this is so important with what's going on in the world right now in the material world right now, in the physical world right now, in the spiritual world right now. In the same way that someone seeing the best in you, knowing what you are truly capable of, can help you reach your dreams and become that self more fully, so too can holding an awareness that just like our bodies, the material world holds its own light and benefits from love, attention, and care. Thus, we are being called to be earth caretakers, beloveds. Hear what this is saying, follow the dots, understand. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that this is coming out in a way that you can see how this is tied to the beginning of the show, um, the beginning of this video as earth, earth caretakers and knowing the self, and having that awareness and realizing that just as keeping our bodies healthy, we benefit by living longer. Keeping our earth healthy, we live longer. And we benefit more. Everyone benefits more because there is an abundance, not a lack. This is the loving art of integrating spirit into matter, and it is a part of your spiritual potency and healing gift to be able to love the physical world as an element of your spiritual journey. Did you catch that? That was deep. This is the loving art of integrating spirit into matter, and it is a part of your spiritual potency and healing gift to be able to love the physical world as an element of your spiritual journey. So beloveds, when you're looking for purpose, understand that your presence here on this earth is that purpose. You, you are using the element of earth and earth is an element just as water and air and fire are, earth is an element. You're using that earth as an element of your spiritual journey. Just as you use fire, which is the spirit, passion, and everything else, part of the assertive and the aggressive. 
that's the red, that's the root. <clears throat> Learn how to put these things into context, beloved. Objects become talismans when they are cleansed, dedicated and charged with sacred intent. This is consecration on the rendering of something into sacredness. Talismans are a way to enjoy a spiritual relationship with the material world. It is not a matter of not being able to work without them, but more of enjoyment and beauty of working with the world, material world in a spiritual way. That is why I love tarot cards. That is why I love ruined stones. That is why I love mirror therapy and, and, and different things that I, I use to bring more insight, more depth into something to cause my imagination to be sparked, to set my spirit on fire so that I'm filled with wisdom, you know, and, and that's, that's what it's about. It doesn't get more potent or more powerful than that. And pendulums. I used to like pendulums a lot and the crystals and so forth. Beloveds, bring these things into your world and charge them with your energy and understand just like we say namaste um the god in me honors the god in you when you're in that place of worship and and, and devotion and adoration the god in me when you're in that space sees the god in you and we are one because of the knowing of that and the sharing of that. It's very powerful, beloveds. And this is what the talismans, this is what this is saying, that we need to create these kinds of physical things in our physical space that we need to, instead of just having a million trillion knickknacks, you know, to have maybe a set that you've empowered or that you've attuned or that this is going to bless my table. And so every time somebody uses the salt and the pepper shaker, they bless the food and they bless your table, they bless their digestion. You're blessing them. And that's its intention and that's its use. Everything in your house sometimes or special things, just like I sat and there was something I had that was... I said was, I had the stone, the stone that I keep in my bedroom. So, beloveds, you, sh you first have to know and claim your sovereignty in order before you can put or charge or speak to the sovereignty in something else and ask something of it. You have to know. That you have that ability first. You have to believe it. And you have to be able to connect with the energy of this. And then you exchange. And, and you watch. And because you are divine being. You have now empowered this to carry out a task. And it will. More of us are waking up to our abilities as sovereign beings. More of us are speaking our sovereignty into this earth. And this earth is listening and manifesting the changes that we are asking for. We're wanting justice. We're wanting abundance. We're wanting equality for all. We're manifesting it. And the more of us that reach our potential to manifest unconditional love, the less this world will resist, the less aggressive it will be, the more allowing it will be the more 
assertiveness will have a place in our evolution instead of aggression. Okay. Part of me needed to say that. Wow. Okay. Um, this is also a way to heal. Wow. 21003. This is also a way to heal any difficult relationship that you may have with. Let me. Okay, let me start right here. Objects become talismans when they are cleansed, dedicated, and chained and charged with sacred intent. This is consecration or the rendering of something into sacredness. Talismans are a way to enjoy a spiritual relationship with the material world. It is not a matter of not being able to work without them, but more of enjoyment and beauty of working with material world in a spiritual way. This is also a way to heal any difficult relationship that you may have had with your mother, your body, eating and food, or with financial and physical security. It can also include difficulties in bringing your ideas into physical form, living your path in a practical and material way, and any other issues that stem from a wounded relationship to matter. And I'm getting to mother. When we have a wounded relationship with our mother, it hinders our ability to produce unconscious love. It, it, it hinders us. It hinders our sovereignty. It hinders us, beloveds. Okay. It can also include difficulties and in bringing your ideas into physical form, living your path in a practical and material way, and any other issues that stem from a wounded relationship to matter, somehow seeing it as less than spirit. We don't see spirit in matter. We don't see spirit in other human beings. We don't see spirit in the book. We don't see spirit in trees. We don't see spirit in rocks. We don't see spirit in the carpet, even though we can get electric shock from, we don't see spirit. We have not trained ourselves. We have not focused ourselves. This is why we have to ascend out of that darkness because spirit is light and enlightenment. And you have to come, you have to raise yourself up out of that darkness. You have to stand, you have to assert your way up out of there. Okay? Okay. Um. What wonderful and varied healing effects talismans can bring to us. It all starts with the honoring of light and matter, the sacredness of the material world. If you have been considering working with crystals for healing or tarot cards or physical tools for spiritual growth, you are encouraged to do so by the oracle of talismans of potency. They will help you grow and empower you. If you have an object in your space that you have been thinking of cleansing, perhaps a crystal or piece of jewelry, this oracle encourages you to do so using breath, salt, moonlight, or sound as you so, as you so choose. So, beloveds, when you're listening to mirror, listening to mirror, listening to mirror, wow. <laughs> Okay, focus, Valerie, bring it back. When you're listening to music, there we go. You are cleansing your soul. You're cleansing your, your, your energy. You're repattering, even momentarily until that song goes off. You, you are manifesting. You are creating, you know? Even a dance move is bringing that spirit into form so that somebody else can visualize and see the way that you are choosing to move. And what you're expressing 
they can interpret, you know. So learn to to get there and to be free in the, in that in that movement and in that being and in that connection of form and spirit and matter and bringing something from a, a different dimension, from an unseen to a seen, you know, something that is tangible, something untangible into tangible and something tangible into non-tangible is different for different ones. So be aware of that as well. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Okay. Remember, the objects in the material world hold vibrations too. Cleansing with love and intention to dissipate negative energy is a way to care for the material world, helping awaken the light within it. If you have been considering building sacred jewelry, or purchasing a crystal or other healing tool, you are encouraged to do so and to learn to work with it. The Oracle of Talismans of Potency supports you in honoring the physical world and its beauty in your life in this way. Okay, I'm feeling like I'm being told to create some talismans. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um... I am going to read the incantation and then we're going to be done with this video. You can say this incantation to bless in an item during your ritual or for a mini blessing and cleansing. Ah, okay, I'm going to do the ritual cleansing and charging for talents when I'm being told to. So, compelled. Thank you, Alchemy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Have have your sacred object with you that you wish to dedicate as a talisman. Have a piece of silk or cotton or other natural fire fabric or lively pattern or lovely patterned material ready to hold your object after the ceremony. Say aloud, I call upon the beings that love me unconditionally. I call upon my old soul light for clear intent, power, peace, protection, and unconditional love. Bless this ritual. May all within it be for the greatest good. So be it. Pick up your sacred object with your left hand and hold your right hand above it. Say, I give thanks for you. I give thanks for the service you will render. I honor you with care, attention, and respect. I cleanse you of all negative energies now. Breathe in deeply and then do three fast exhale breaths swiftly over the object, visualizing negative energy being blown away on the breath. Focus on your heart and the crown of your head being filled with light and that light flowing down through your hands and feet. Visualize the light flowing from your body along your right arm. Half of that energy remains circulating in your body for healing and wellness while the other half pours out of your right hand into the object until it's filled with light so much that the light flows out from it and surrounds it. Say you are cleansed, you are charged with divine light of intent. My intention is for, add here your intention for this piece. Examples are healing, abundance, strength, clarity, love, power, and so on. May this intention manifest for the greatest good and in unconditional love through my own free will, so be it. Keep sending the light, then repeat the following incantation below. After three repetitions, wrap your object in a silk or cotton piece of fabric and keep it out of regular view. For sacred usage and respect, it is best to do this exercise if the piece is used a lot for healing or handled by another. You can say this incantation to bless an item during your ritual or for a mini blessing and cleansing at any time. Sacred object from the earth. You are cleansed now from negativity. You are clear and pure light of eternity. Sacred talisman now become. You are charged with light of perfection. You are blessed with divine intention. 
Sacred talisman, I honor your power. This is your task for every hour. And repeat your intention here. For example, cleanse and protect my energy field with a shield of impenetrable violet light. Sacred talisman, I honor your power. This is your task for every hour. Cleanse and protect my energy field with a shield of impenetrable violet light. Through my own free will, with gratitude in my heart, so full, so be it. And, beloved, that's, that's it. Again, I am drawn to this knot of Isis um, and the color of it. And I'm going to do some research because, like I said, it's, it keeps calling me. Keeps calling me, Valerie. And so, <laughs> beloveds, this is, this has been our reading. I hope everything was good for you as it was good for me. Um, I hope you look at the things and do research and do diligence on them. The peacocks, the message, um, what the peacock stands for spiritually, metaphysically, understanding the lore and the legends behind it, the myth. Understanding those, all those eyes, understanding what it's saying to you, the message about asserting yourself, letting yourself be seen instead of being hidden, asserting yourself, defending the truth and justice and speaking it up for others. Um, I hope you gathered the, the healing of Raphael and the retreating from the romantic angels cards about getting that time for yourself that, that sacred space that sacred time you know um just for you to concentrate on your own um sovereignty and you hear your own thoughts and your own mind outside of others to know if something is really your thoughts or just something that's been planted in you. Most people don't even know how to decipher between the two. Most people don't even have the need to decipher between the two. And as an empath, I need to, is it my feeling or is it someone else's? You know, that's, that's something I'm always dealing with. And in order to know if it's mine, I have to know me. I have to know me like my mama used to say, the back of my hand, you know. And, beloved, you should know yourself that way. You should know yourself in and out. The good, the bad, the ugly, the flawed, the wicked, the wise, the innocent, the rapscallion, you know, the vice lord, whatever, you know, the whore, the harlot. The nun, you ain't getting none, none, none of your business, none, none, none. Know yourselves, beloveds. Know yourselves. And don't let anybody tell you who you are not. Don't let anybody devalue you. Don't let anybody devalue your foundation. Allow yourself repattering. Allow yourself to look at things and contemplate them in a different way, from a different viewpoint. That is growth. That is how you learn to walk. It was in you, but you had to contemplate it until you just, you, you gained all the knowledge of thinking about it. And then you began being wise and you started crawling and you started rocking and you started holding up and building the strength in those legs until you start stepping and then you start running. But beloved, it all, before you had the wisdom, you had to get the knowledge. You had to think and you had to think and think and think and process. And we have to let ourselves get back to that state, that, that infant state where we're okay to process and 
it's okay to fall down and there's nothing to be ashamed about and there's nothing to be guilty about and there's nothing to apologize for and get up dust yourself up and fight again you know it's about fighting beloveds another thing before i end in this um video is i have been struggling um personally i wanted to go see my grandson jaguar santos castillo will be one years old on the ninth on this month he was born nine 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 everything was nine for that boy and i'm not going to be able to go see him and this has caused me a great deal of mm, all kinds of emotions i'll say and this is what i've been dealing with too and feeling things about and i am learning you know to visit this baby in, in different ways now and i think that's what i'm supposed to be doing and that's where that Merkaba card comes in for me. Um, find out where it comes in for you. It's not just about visiting other spirit realms and other dimensions and so forth and so on. It's about being present in a way that's not physical, but your presence still being there. And still being felt by that person um, and the communication that happens even there by speaking your intentions by speaking that unconditional love by reaffirming and reassuring that energy that spiritual being who he is and how much he's loved and this all goes into understanding your sovereignty your ability to bless somebody your ability to create a talisman your ability to charge something so that you can get a spiritual message from it beloveds we all have these abilities we are born with them some are higher tuned to different frequencies than others but you have them beloved you just have to fine tune it some things will not resonate for you that's not for you other things will don't worry about what other people say or think it's not about them it's about you and what your place and your purpose is your style your expression you are a single vessel of spiritual expression unique there's not another like you even the stars have their own names beloveds you have yours regardless of the name you have right now that which is already always existed always had a name that is who you are as a sovereign being and you need to call that back to you that is what you need your Merkaba to reach that is how you get to that higher highest vibration of yourself that is the current that is the frequency it is not about attachment it is about the journey too and that's going to end it beloveds so um, I just want to say, ground yourselves, breathe, know that you are sovereign beings, oops, know that you are sovereign beings, beloveds, don't let anyone tell you who you are or who you are not, you define your worth, believe in your worth, if spirit brought you into existence, you have more value than you know. You have reason and purpose. You define it with your free will. That's what life is. Life is a gift. How you live it is up to you. 
even if it seems someone else is determining and dictating, even within that box, that's your space. You decide what you think about it, how you think about it, how you live and how you exist in it. Whether you're going to be happy, sad, or whether you're going to suffer, or whether you're going to be a survivor, or whether you're going to be a victim. Find strength in your spirit. Start identifying yourself as a spiritual being and not just a human being. And you'll start to notice subtle changes, beloveds. Okay, <laughs> be love and be blessed, beloved, that I am Mother with Wisdom, also known as Valerie Ames. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I have a blog talk radio show, Mother with Wisdom, um, Honeycomb Conversations for Sacred Sexuality, Voluptuous Investments um, for Big Girls <laughs> and those that like big girls. Um, or those that just have an un curiosity um, about the processing of how we process things. Yes, big girls process things different than skinny girls. Okay? It just is. <laughs> okay, beloveds. That's it. Namaste.